hey guys welcome back to the channel my name is linda on this channel i share videos about sewing pattern drafting and everything fashion on today's tutorial i'm going to be sharing with you guys how to cut and sew this beautiful short gown and if this seems like what you're interested in please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and tap on the notification bell let's jump right in Hey so mate, so here is my work table and this is my fabric. I've gone ahead to measure out the measurements for the front and the back piece. So you can see that I have the front piece and two extra pieces for the back. So for the back, I had to cut out the zipper allowance as well, if you can see what I did there. So the first thing I'll be doing just go ahead and take the shoulder measurement. So for the shoulder, I have 15 inches divided by 2, which equals 7.5. And I'm just going to be marking that on this part, okay? So I already gave a half inch from the top. You can see my chalk lines there. So the next thing I'll be doing just to go ahead and check the half length. I have 16 inches there plus half inch making 16.5. So now I'm just going to be marking out the neckline. So for my neckline, for the width of my neck, I'm marking 5 inches and from there, I'm just going to be connecting it into this part. You can see me going down by 1 inches also from there and then I'm just going to slant it to make a shoulder slope. So now that I have my shoulder slope, next I'm going to do is just go ahead and mark half of my armhole measurement. So for the armhole measurement, I have seven and a half and that is 7.5. I just made a mark there. I'm just going to extend the lines like you see me doing and then I'm going to be rolling a straight line for the armhole curve. And then the next thing I'll be doing is just go ahead and mark my horizontal measurement. So for my bust point, I have nine inches at this point. So I'm just going to be marking that. And then the next is the under bust, which is 12 inches. And I'm going to be marking that as well. And then after that is 16 inches, which is the half length. And then I'm just going to connect the lines into straight horizontal lines to identify them. So after that, the next thing, just go ahead and mark out the armhole curve. For that, I'm using my French curve to get that correctly. You can go ahead and use a free hand if you wish. So guys, just take note that the front armhole is different from the back armhole. I'm going to insert that later. So after that, the next thing, just to take my neck depth measurement, okay? So this is to cover out the shape of my neckline. But at a point, this wasn't really what I wanted. I had to go ahead and extend it further by five inches so for here i'm just marking two and a half inches which is really not what i wanted so now i'm just going to add half of an inch like this for the shoulder joining allowance and also i'm going to make sure that my armhole uh, measurement is also up to 7.5 inches around that part so guys i marked out the front neckline first of all because i want to use it to cut out the back before cutting out the back piece actually and then I'm going to be measuring half of my bust palm measurement, which is 7 inches divided by 2, giving me 3.5 inches. Okay, so the bust pan is also called the nipple to nipple measurement. I'm just going to measure that on the bust line, the under bust, and then I'll be measuring that on the waistline. So after that, I'm just going to connect it straight into a line, a vertical line, and then I'll be inserting my darts around the waistline from there. I'll be taking 0.75 inches on both sides of the dart, so 0.75 on the left side and on the right side just to make up about 1.5 inches that intake, okay? So now I'm just going to connect the lines towards the bust point. I'll be marking 1 inch downwards and then connect the lines. So guys, whatever I'm doing on the that's at the front, I'll be doing that for the back piece as well. And now it's time to mark our body measurements. On the bust line, my bust circumference divided by 4 plus 2 inches stitching allowance. And then I'll be marking that also around the upper chest line, which is also somewhere around my armhole. And now I'll be marking quarter of my under bust plus 2 inches stitching allowance. And then at the waistline, I'll be marking quarter of my waist measurement plus 1.5 inch for the dart intake and then 2 inches extra for the stitching allowance. So I went ahead to roll the line inaccurately because I am not done with that area. I'm going to be shaping that when I am done stitching the top part. And then next thing I'll be doing now is just to insert the back neckline. And for that I'll be inserting 4.5 inches from the top like you see me doing. So I'm just marking 4.5 at this point. And then I'll be connecting that straight to meet with the front neckline after I am done cutting out the top. 
Before doing that, I'll go ahead and quickly mark in the half of an inch for the join allowance at the top. So I'm just going to cut it out like so. And then I'm going to be removing half of an inch from this part to eliminate the zipper bulge. So I'm just going to slant it upwards and then rule it straight with my ruler. And then I'll just go ahead and cut it out. So guys, if you can remember, I said I'll be trimming out the back neckline after I am done cutting out the front. So that is what I am exactly doing. And then I'm going to be notching out the zipper allowance from here just to indicate that and also i'll be notching the dart intake for the front and the back then i'll slash out this part to eliminate the zipper bulge and then this is what i have for the front piece and then also for the back piece it's all ready so the next thing i'll do is just go ahead and extend this dart to the other part of the top and also for the back i'll be marking out the dart as well so now this is the lower part which is the skirt part and i have two inches and a half of this this is basically a continuation from where the half length stopped the length of the gown for my client is 39 inches and removing 16 inches there i have about 25 inches left which is making up for the whole total of 45 inches for the length of the Ankara African print. So I'll be taking in one and a half inches for the hemming and also I'll be running the basting stitch at the top like this all the way to the end of the two and a half yards of material which I have here and then I'll be making the gathers with it. And now the next thing I'll be doing just to go ahead and cut out the lining piece for both the back piece and the front piece. This is what I have for the lining piece of the material. I already went ahead to cut it out and now I'll just go ahead and allocate each lining to its side of the fabric and then I'll go to the machine and stitch it up. So now I have already gone ahead to stitch the neckline right side to right side and also I went ahead to top stitch on it after I have notched the neckline all around. This is what it looks like after I am done notching it. And I went ahead to do the same thing for the back. So guys, after that, the next thing I did was to go ahead and stitch the sides of the back piece. I'm talking about the open sides around the zipper allowance. And then I'll go ahead and do it off the camera and then I'll get back to you. After stitching the necklines and the sides of the back, I went ahead to mark the dart intake and also I'm doing the same thing for the back. For this dart, I'll be going upwards at this point by 10 inches at the back and then I'll be rolling that into a straight line just to connect my dart. So this is what it looks like after I am done stitching out the darts, both for the front and for the back. This is how the front is looking like, looking all nice. And then the back, I'm going to be placing the right side to right side on the front facing each other and then I'll go ahead and stitch the shoulder lines and then stitch the sides. So guys, I'm done stitching the shoulders and now it's time to stitch up the sides. So I'll be including my body measurements around that part and then marking the stroke lines to give me the shape of what I want. So this is going to help me to shape the top part. So now that I am done marking, I'll just go ahead and sit it at the machine and this is what I have after I am done. I'm just going to be marking out 2 inches for the initial stitching allowance I have and I'm going to be trimming out the excesses after I am done marking. So now the next thing I'll do is just to go ahead and give it a good press and this is how it is looking like after I have pressed it very well and you can see that it is looking all nice. This is how the back is also looking like. Next thing I'll be doing just to go ahead and shaping out the excesses that are picking out below and because I want it to be leveled I'm trimming it into a straight line. And this is the result of what I just did. Both the front and the back is looking all straight up and nice. And then I went ahead to give it a press. So after that, I'll go ahead and insert the down part after running a basting stitch and making a gathers on it, okay? So I'll just go ahead and do it off the camera and then I'll get back to you. So I have done that and this is what it looks like after I am done running a basting stitch and I also went ahead to gather it all up. So guys, the length of my gathers is basically the total circumference of the round waist measurement 
and I went ahead to press it with my iron to let it stay the way it is before fixing it to my upper bodice. So guys, I'll quickly align this up and the bottom part just to stitch it up in the middle. So I'll just go ahead and run a stitch from this part down to the end, making sure they are all the same in measurement. So I'll go and do that off camera and this is what I have after I am done. This is how beautiful it's looking like and this is how the front is. Okay, so guys, the next thing I'll be doing just to go ahead and fix the sleeves and I'll be trimming out the front armhole before doing that. And also, I'll go ahead and fix the zipper and then run the stitch to the lower part and hem this part as well so guys now it's time to fix the sleeve i have a long rectangular fabric and this is going to be enough for me to just cut two sleeves for the gown and now i fold it into two equal parts and i'm just going to be measuring what i have for the length of the sleeve i have about 23 inches and then that is going to be enough for the length of the sleeve for the client and for the width of the sleeve i have 20 inches here so i'm going to be folding this further into two equal half making two folds it means i want to cut out two different sleeve okay so i'm cutting the sleeve once So now I'm going to be measuring 4 inches like this for the sleeve cap and then I'll be leaving the rest like that because the sleeve is a balloon sleeve. So I'll be inserting half of my armhole measurement around the sleeve cap area and then I'll be adding 2 inches like I added for the top. And then next I'll be slanting a line like this from the tip of the sleeve down to the line I marked initially and then I'll be curving it out into a sleeve. So you can go ahead and use a French curve. I have a tutorial on how to cut out a sleeve. I'll be leaving a link about that on the description box or on the screen. So guys, after cutting out the sleeve, it's time to trim out the front of the sleeve like I marked. And this is what it looks like after I am done cutting it out. For the front of the sleeve, I'll be marking a chalk line there. And then for the back, I'll be marking double chalk lines there just to identify them when I want to stitch them to my dress. And then the next thing I'll be doing just to go ahead and double fold this part just to make an elastic casing for it. And then I'll be inserting my elastic. For my elastic, I'll be taking the round measurement of my upper wrist like this, and then I'll be using that. This is what I have after I am done. And this is how the elastic turned out to be in the sleeve. And this is also the other part of the sleeve. So for the zip, I have already gone ahead to pin it halfway, and I'm just going to complete that using the zipper allowance intake as a guide. So I'm just going to be pinning it from that place where I made a fold. And I also went ahead to press it before doing that. After I was done pinning, now it's time to stitch it like this. So I'll place it this way on the machine and then run a stitch and also do the same thing for the other end as well. Now for the belt or the band as you may call it, this is what I have. And then I had a long strip of fabric. I folded it into two because I have five inches there. So after folding, I got about two and a half inches. I'm just going to be running a stitch like this all the way down to the end. And then I'll go ahead and turn it inside out. Now I am done turning it inside out and this is what it looks like. I just went ahead to give it a press and I also go ahead and press the dress itself and then we are done. This is what it looks like. This is the aftermath of the dress and this is the zipper. Everything has been fixed and also I went ahead to hand this part. Everything is all done. This is how beautiful the dress came out looking like. If this video has been helpful to you, kindly give me a like and also tell me what you think in the comment section and I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell. With that being said, bye for now.